after you're all enjoying the last bit of summer and uh, getting your kids in school. But that's just fine because we're recording this for, uh, for reposting. So we're pretty excited. We have some wonderful things to talk about this month. Our theme is, is outside. And we're going to start with uh, the Hornaday Award. And that is you, Sean. All right. Well, um, if you go to the council website, our Screen Boosted website, you'll see that we're adding content all the time. Just a couple of things before we dive into the Hornaday Award. We've added some new navigation buttons up here at the top of the screen. So if you're looking for specific content in a particular area, all you have to do is click one of these buttons and it'll take you right to that area. So for our Hornaday, that's going to be in our Scouts BSA. So if we click the Scouts BSA, bang, it takes us right down to the Scout content. And here you can see that we have posted a video about the Hornaday Award. Now, Paul Greitz is a member of our uh, Screen Boosted Scouting team, and he put together this video and some resources about what can be done to... Uh, Earn the Horde Today Award. I learned a few things uh, by watching and reading what he put together. I did not know that this award could be earned by a unit and by an adult as well as a regular Scouts PSA member. So there's there's options there for everybody. Um, Paul is focused mainly in his video on how a scout can go about earning that award, uh, but there is some resources and information there that will help you uh, understand that process for adults and uh, the unit as well. So great opportunity, fantastic award it is the oldest conservation award that is given in the United States and it just happens to be part of our scouting legacy so kind of a kind of a neat thing so um, that's what we have for the Hornaday Award Betsy. Yeah I was really amazed I thought I knew about the Hornaday Award and I did not <laughs> turns out uh, with what uh, what we have posted so that's that's a pretty great award but we're going to talk about some Cub Scout we've got a lot of Cub Scout stuff posted for this month two Montana produced pieces of content and one is about talking sticks now, the, talking sticks have been around a long time in, in Cub Scouts. You know, when you sit around and talk time, they're a great way to help teach courtesy and give Scouts a visual for who's talking. But right now, it is so important to have something like a talking stick because if you've got your Scouts together and they've got those masks on, you can't tell who's talking a lot of times. So this video and the leader resource guide really gets into the the, the reasons for using a talking stick because there's really a lot of good reasons to use one as well as shows you how to make a great talking stick with lots of danglies and, and stuff on it uh, because they really do need to be a very tactile uh, thing to work with your Cub Scouts. So that's one piece of content to take a look at. The other one is called Cub Scouts Cut Up. And you, there are certainly a lot of great meetings, and Sean will be talking in a bit about some of the BSA content. But sometimes you just might need an activity that's fun to do with your scouts for part of your meeting. And that's what this content's about. And Cut Up has a double meeting. One is around, yes, letting those bears use knives, but other younger scouts can use plastic knives you know, to cut bananas if they're that young, but they can use potato peelers. So this gets into some fun things you can do with those act, with those tools. And it's a great for social distance again, because you're teaching them safety and they all have to be apart because of the blood circle. So it's a wonderful thing to do outside. It's fun and it's messy. You know, really bears don't get to use their knives enough. A lot of times they'll do it in the bear claw adventure and then the pocket knives go away. So, hey, carve up potatoes knock yourself out and there's a, a benefit that you can do if you get those scouts peeling a lot of potatoes is send them home with a bag of peeled potatoes that they've done mashed potatoes for their family and there's a leave even in the, the leader resource there's a label that you can insert to I don't know, invite the parent to a committee meeting or just check in with the parent so it's a great way to connect up with the parent and the other meaning of cutout that is in the activity is jokes we all need to be laughing these days and so having the scouts tell jokes while they're working is part of this activity so there's jokes on in in the leader resource guide that you can use and you can also also encourage your scouts to certainly bring their own jokes and crack each other up. So that are those two resources in uh, that we produced for you. And Sean is going to talk about a repost resource from BSA that we're pretty excited about because it's pretty great. All right. Yeah. Uh, again, we've added another section to our uh, Cub Scout resources. And if we go to our webpage again, we can see right here underneath the Cub Scout resources, we've added this title. It says National Links and Resources for Cub Adventures. National Council has been putting forth some effort to create some resources for units all over the United States 
to use and to help them uh, be able to handle the adventures. And so if you go to this particular link, it takes you to the uh, Den Leader Tips and Tricks video page. And on this page are a lot of great resources for Den Leaders to be able to use. There's some stuff in here about how to use Scout Book, uh, and the, but most importantly are the adventures. And they've broken it down by rank. So you have your tiger, your lions, your wolves, your bears, your weeblos. And then there's videos for the specific adventures that apply to those particular rank levels. So if you want to learn how to do Code of the Wolf adventure, you can click that video and watch it. Give you some great ideas, uh, give you some, some resources on, on how to do that uh, activity in your own den at home. Um, most of them have even included some ideas on what to do with social distancing uh, to help keep us safe during this time as well. So lots of great things for people to find and use there. And uh, we just are going to keep bringing those natural resources to you. We've got some Boy Scout stuff coming up. We've got some adventure stuff to come up. And we'll be adding those all to the website as we uh, we dig in deeper and find more and more of that stuff. Yeah, they're really exciting things and uh, great things to be going over in virtual roundtables, which hopefully you're, you're doing, you know, highlight a resource every month would be a great idea. So I think, Bill, you are next. I'm pretty excited what you're going to talk about because uh, I've been experimenting with these things and they can really help uh, the outside experience. So over to you. Okay, learn of the names of things is a part of appreciating nature. You don't have to bring a field guide along if you have the right nature app. Now, everything from the Tiger Adventures, My Tiger Jungle, up to the Scouts BSA first class rank requirements can require you need to find out what a name of a plant is and or other items, nature items. But nature apps are a great way to use technology to help Scouts learn and appreciate what they're seeing outside. Now, three of these apps that we have um, that we experimented with were the PlantNet, PlantSnap, and iNaturals. And they're all easy to use and they're free. And we have the instructions on those, but one of them, iNaturals, also does things like identify rocks and animals. So that's really handy. Um, all the, like I said, Tiger Adventures, Wolf Adventures, Bear Adventures, Scouts BSA First Class Rank, all of them require um, identifying some um, plants. And the best part about it is, is if you take a picture of it, you can take it with you and identify it later. That way you don't have to worry about, say, picking a flower, which is a great way with leave no trace. You leave it there and you take a picture along with you and then you can identify it later. And you could go home and the scouts can show their mom and dad and their whoever um, some of the things that they did on their, on their adventure and pass it on to other scouts. So these nature apps are a great way to learn about these things and, Hopefully, uh, in the next month or two, we'll be experimenting some other apps. Yeah, I, I'm looking forward to those. Because you, you know, because you were doing this segment, Bill, I tried the iNaturalist. I was up at KBRM, and a scout came over with a rock. I'm like, what the heck? We'll give this a try. It was a red rock, and this scout had never been to camp, brand new scout. And I'll be gone if we weren't able to get take the picture of that rock and identify it with that app. And she thought that was the coolest thing ever. Uh, so it, she was definitely hooked. Definitely hooked. So that was a lot of fun. So definitely try those apps out. And trying those apps, it's kind of it's kind of addicting, as well to try to find these these names of these things. And it's even neater if you have multiple apps and try to see if they all match up. And I did that with a couple of them. Oh, did they? Did they match? Yes, they did. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah. So leaders, uh, this is a fun technology. Uh, jump on board. So we'll be highlighting some more apps. Bill's Bill's going to bring some more hopefully next month. So this month was outside, things like the Naturalist app and getting your Cub Scouts outside we're talking about. Next month is recruiting, and we're already getting ahead of that by posting a class for you leaders, and that is the class on the um, – new member coordinator. So if you don't have a new member coordinator for your unit, this is a, a relatively new position that came on a couple of years ago from Scouts PSA, but it's somebody on your committee who like loves talking to people, um, it, you know, is friendly and helpful and wants to help the unit. But this is a great job for somebody who's maybe scheduled, and, you know, doesn't work out for when dens meet or when the pack meets, but is good on the phone, can do that kind of thing. And they 
work individually with the parents to make them feel welcome and connected with the unit uh, so so it's not a rough transition because let's face it if you've never been in scouting before it can be a, a little jarring sometime you know we, we use lots of terms and rank and all that kind of stuff so your new member coordinator paves the way for that success because an uninvolved parent pretty much risks losing your losing that scout and we don't want that so this is going to be a live 90 minute training and the sign up live like always is going is on the uh, screen boosted scout scouting sites so i don't know if sean wants to show that or not uh but that is going to be on september 17th 7 to 8 30. Uh, so i hope we get some some good signups for that live new member coordinator training to help everybody get ready for recruiting so what do we have i think that's about it we do have a maybe an announcement sean do you want to talk about blast upcoming classes you betcha. So we have, uh, we had a lot of success with the blast training we offered here the last couple of months, and there's been some requests for some more of that to happen. So we have scheduled two more blast trainings, one for uh, Monday, September 21st and 28th, and the other one for Wednesday on November 4th and the 11th. Uh, both those signups are available on the website. Uh, once you sign up for it, you'll receive an automated response that gives you all the connection information and uh, what else, prerequisites need to be done before that class starts. So uh, excited to be bringing that to you and giving leaders an opportunity to get that uh, vital training that they need. Yep, Bill was just sharing, actually, when we were chatting before the broadcast, that he's got some leaders up there in Havre uh, that have been talking the class up because they enjoyed the first one. So that's, that's always good to hear that uh, on-the-ground testimonial. Uh, so we are going to, again, be talking recruiting next time. And Dylan, who is our venturing uh, main person in SBS, isn't here at this time, but he promises to have some content out next time. So I think that's it. Thank you for watching. Keep using those screen boosted resources and we will see you next month. Thanks everybody.